This case has divided the town. It has divided the town significantly. Every family is impacted. Every family. And there's ways I can't even tell you. My own family's impacted, okay? So you have families that and friends that have been friends for many, many years. And this case has divided them. Now for what's trending in true crime, new developments in the Karen Reed murder case as the judge has issued an important ruling last Thursday, which will have a ripple effect for both the state and the defense. All right, so I'm in receipt of the joint motion to continue the motion hearing date, cancel the final pretrial conference date, and convert the trial date to a motion hearing date. So I just want to start off with, I think it's premature to continue the trial date today. So I'm not going to do that. All right, so this is a joint motion to postpone the case. And the Honorable Beverly Canone denied it. So the start of the trial set for March the 12th. That remains the date. Both sides requested the delay in order to process some evidence taken from DNA samples as well as some cell phone records. To take a look at those ahead of the trial. Parties are due back in court next Monday. And according to reports, the defense is expected to present a motion to the, court to, to the court to dismiss the case. Okay, now on the heels of that recent ruling, what does the denial mean for each side? We got a great power panel this morning. Let's bring them in now. Criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Noah Pines. Remotely standing by law enforcement expert Sonny Slaughter and retired criminal defense attorney Kirk Nurmi. Wonderful to have you all on the program this morning. So the defense isn't accepting the ruling is what I'm hearing. And they, they want to dismiss the charges at that point. I want to make sure I was reading uh, this correctly. Uh, yeah, they're, they're asking for a dismissal. Uh, Noah, uh, do you think there's any chance uh, that that could possibly happen for them? Full out dismissal, no. But And the judge didn't say she won't continue the case. She said it's premature at this time. And and you know anyone who's ever been in court or been involved in a case know it's kind of like a funnel a case is like a funnel it starts real slow and as you get to the end it moves real fast and um, everybody always wants more time and it sounds like the judge wants to keep the case in the bottom of that funnel to see what we can see what she can push through to get resolved doesn't mean that she won't continue the case but as soon as she says case continued it kind of goes back to the top of the funnel and it goes slower again. So I understand why she'd want to keep the pressure on both parties right now to really get stuff done. Right, sure, keep it moving. You know, and speaking of getting stuff done, Kirk Nurmi, let me go to you on the trial preparation question, if I may, please. When we think about what each side is doing as the, the funnel's getting, you know, slimmer and slimmer and we're getting in toward that trial date, talk to me, please, about what the defense is doing and what the state is doing. Well, listen, I think the state wants to go status quo. They want to keep a lot of this evidence out, evidence that doesn't support them, particularly, you know, this uh, inquiry that the feds have made into this whole process, right? I'm sure the state would like to ignore that, pretend that doesn't exist, and hopefully make sure the defense doesn't get to explore that. If you're the defense, you're still working to get every piece of evidence that exonerates your client to the table. And that's why I agree with no. I think she's, you know, the judge saying it's premature at this time because the judge knows that ultimately if the cell phone data, if the DNA and going back to that federal investigation, if those things need to be explored, if that's legitimate areas of inquiry for the defense, she is going to have to continue that trial. And if you're the defense right now, you are working, putting everything forward to getting all the exonerating evidence possible, even though it's at this close to trial date, because you know it's probably going to be continued because the judge's hand is going to be forced whether she wants to or not, because she has to look out for the defendant's Sixth Amendment rights. And with all these areas of inquiry, she just cannot shut them down. Mm, Kirk, thank you. Great points. Sonny, I want to go to you on the question of um, what's sort of hanging in the balance right now, and that is this separate state investigation into whether there was any collusion and any conspiracy going on to intimidate witnesses between Karen Reed and Turtle Boy. So he's currently accused. She is not accused, uh, but we know two of her cell phones were seized. We know that there's been a grand jury convened on this, and there's been some information released, 189 calls between the two of them. Uh, Sonny, are 
prosecutors and law enforcement perhaps further along in this investigation with Karen Reed than we, the public, may think they are? Well, they should be. At this point, they should have been able to interview a lot of people and start working on the data and the cross connection between the calls, the times, and putting together whether there is some type of conspiracy. If, they, if there is any delay, it would be on people that they cannot speak to, but they feel that are really important. But otherwise, they should have been boots on the ground, making the connections on the calls, and having a, a real layout of what has happened in this conspiracy. Sunny, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. No, great points. Uh, we'll, we'll see what, what happens with this one. Uh, I, I've got eyes wide open. Let me tell you, I'm not convinced of anything at this point. Um, let's switch gears now to another high-profile case, shall we? Jury selection is going to begin on Wednesday in the trial for Hannah Gutierrez-Reed. She's the armor on the Rust movie set. Investigators say they recovered six live rounds of ammunition that were brought onto the set of the Western film. And prosecutors allege that she brought them onto the set, perhaps unwittingly even. I don't know how that happens when she first began her work on the movie. Now, Gutierrez and Alec Baldwin are both defendants. They both face involuntary manslaughter charges in connection to the shooting death of the cinematographer Helena Hutchins. There she is on the right. Now, Gutierrez has reportedly been battling drug and alcohol uh, abuse problems. And there were allegations coming from the state that she may have been doing those things on the set. Again, just allegations. Uh, but no testing was ever done in the aftermath of the shooting for that. So let's talk a little bit about this. As we get ready for the trial, uh, who do you think has the facts on their side? Is it the state of New Mexico or is it defendant Hannah Gutierrez? Let's turn back to our power panel. Noah Pines, your thoughts on this, please. So for Hannah Gutierrez, uh, I think the state does because it's a negligence, it's criminal negligence, you know, reckless. You were, you, you brought live ammunition, which then was put in a gun. You know that you're on a movie set. People don't treat guns the same way they would, you know, if you're a police officer, or you're out on the street and it is your responsibility, not 99%, 110% to make sure that there's no possibility that that weapon could fire a live round and kill somebody. That that's it, 100%. Right, right. Uh, I'm I'm with you, Noah. Kirk Nermy, uh, do you agree? Talk to us on your thoughts, please. I agree. I mean, it, this is her job, right? This is her job to secure the armor to make sure there's no live bullets on set. And you know, the case becomes almost unwinnable for Miss Gutierrez if there is evidence to suggest that she's using drugs and or alcohol while she's doing this important job because. Her negligence in that regard could result in something fatal like one, the tragedy that unfolded here. So, yeah, I mean, the, the case New Mexico has against her is is almost one that she, I, I don't think she has any chance to beat. What's going to be interesting to me, Julie, is when they put this case out, when they put the ferocity of the evidence out there against her, is this going to kind of illuminate Mr. Baldwin's culpability is this going to show maybe that he wasn't as culpable as the, the state of new mexico wants him to believe because the evidence against miss gutierrez is so strong mm -hmm. a great points kirk thank you uh, sunny last but not least take us home if you would please on this one your thoughts on who's got the stronger case I absolutely think the state has the strongest case. And as my two uh, co-guests have already said, the negligence is high in this. She has already failed in some aspects. If she was uh, had drug use and abuse, she should not have been in the position. Her employer should have known this. People should have said something. It's all on her. And I do not see her faring well in this particular trial. And I see it worse for her if she did have a drug use and abuse problem. Right. It's, um, it's bad for her. It it's sure really is, bad. Sunny. You're right. I'm with you all on this. Uh, well, that case kicks off this week, and we will be bringing it all to you live on Court TV. Big thanks to Sunny Slaughter and Kirk Nermy for all of their great analysis this morning. We'll see you both soon. Noah's coming along with us. Here's what we've got coming up next on Opening Statements. He continues to strangle Henry and telling her she needs to finish this movie. Um, he makes a comment uh, asking do people need to be taught how to or die these days. Um, tells her to take one for the team. And then he says, he
realize I still have to carry your sorry ass down my car. Our experts are weighing in on the disturbing case against who police say is a would-be serial killer named Brian Smith. There he is in the orange jumpsuit. Well, we're going to examine his body language and his voice. And look at his reactions as he watched the video evidence of what police say is one of the murders that he did. Plus, former momfluencer Ruby Frankie set to be sentenced tomorrow for child abuse. So how will her guilty plea factor in at her sentencing?